While anger, violence and hate were front and center on January 6, 2021, they're not new. Extremist ideology has been present throughout America's history. A new six-part documentary on Paramount Plus titled Indivisible Healing Hate chronicles decades of domestic extremism in the United States. It shows a history of white supremacy and neo-Nazism and draws lines from those movements to the Capitol Hill insurrection. To speak about these extremist ideologies, I want to bring in Sean Gillespie, who is featured in the documentary. He is a former member of the far-right group Aryan Nations, who served time in prison for firebombing a synagogue in Oklahoma. Sean, thank you for joining us. As I mentioned, you served time because of a hate crime you committed. You say you regret that act and your former racist ideology. Tell us about your transition from anger to remorse. Um, well, it wasn't overnight. <clears throat> you know, a lot of it was dealing with um, a lot of trauma that I experienced as a child. Uh, as a child, I was sexually molested and raped by an Asian male, and so I began to hate um, Asians and homosexuals, um, falsely blaming them for what had happened to me by one individual. Um, and hate, by the time I decided to renounce it, it become more of a habit than anything. Um, but I did a lot of terrible stuff, and so I had to really do a lot of introspection to get past that. Uh, it's horrible that you were hurt in that way, and it is also horrible how you hurt others. Um, tell yes. us about how how you've been received. One of the things I thought was really interesting as I was reading some of your writings <clears throat> is about, it, it seemed like your path towards, um, towards reconciliation came from the forgiveness of your victims. Yes, yes. Um, the synagogue, um, actually, we corresponded a little bit while I was in prison. Um, since I've been out, they've decided not to be in contact with me, I'm, I, which I understand. I don't hold any animosity towards them for that decision. Um, but surrounding yourself by positive people always gives you a positive mindset. Um, I've been thankful that since I got out, um, I joined the local MMA community and fight at a gym called Warrior Camp. And the owner um, is a multiracial couple, um, Rose and Pablo Alfonso, and they've provided a diverse environment that has become a family to me since I've been out. Um, the people there are just amazing and have been very influential along with my fiance in helping me um, overcome the, the hate that I had so much inside. And given that you had that hate, you have a unique perspective to understand um, with your previous actions and beliefs what happened on January 6th. What parallels do you see? Well, I think, you know, it, I don't think white supremacism, uh, white supremacy violence is widespread. I think it does occur. Um, and I think that even with there was a larger crowd, as they mentioned in the documentary, um, but really only a small minority in that crowd decided to um, commit violent acts. And I think the uh, the issue is how to curb these small people from doing violent acts that have larger like I don't believe everybody on January 6th with a white supremacist, but there certainly was white supremacists there, and I believe they're the ones who caused a lot of the issues. It wasn't the, the greater crowd. Um, I think the way to curb it is more information. Um, I think we live in so much um, an age of information right now that people have to realize that these belief systems are really archaic. They're no longer you know, the norm. And um, science is disproving a lot of these white supremacy claims, um, whether it's National Geographic with the Human Genome Project, which is showing that we all have common ancestry through DNA. Everybody on this planet is connected. And, you know, that goes right against their belief system of white supremacy. You mentioned uh, living in an age of, of information. Um, <laughs> And, and there's been a lot of discussion about the power of words, especially when they come from high-profile politicians and other leaders. What have you learned uh, about how people have the power to influence and channel feelings of anger and frustration about other issues into acts of hate? 
Yeah, I mean, you know, words are important. Um, you know, I I think, uh, you know, words have got a lot of impact in how people react to stuff. Um, you know, I, I, <clears throat> I personally use a lot of terrible words and actions in my life, you know, and so um, being able to <clears throat> control yourself a little more and process stuff and think instead of just react seems to be the, the way to overcome that. John, organizations tracking extremism have reported increases in recent years of hate in the U.S. As you can just, as our viewers just saw, there was a map about how the government has been tracking that hate. The government's also a warning of online threats of violence against government officials and lawmakers. How do we stop this escalation in extremism? You know, I, it's kind of a hard, hard question because, you know, um, since I've been out, I come from like a unique microcosm of being in prison for 16 years to with, with the political climate from before I went to prison to now this, there's just being so much division on both sides. Mm -hmm. And um, it's, it's really interesting because it doesn't seem like there's much dialogue between the two sides, the left and the right at all. Nobody wants to talk. Nobody wants to solve problems. And I understand that's why there was a lot of frustration. Um, both on the left and the right over the last couple of years because nobody wants to deal with these issues and and have dialogue and that's i think that needs to be more of a greater focus than anything else i think you know uniting this country uh, you know it doesn't mean we have to agree you know i i don't um i i hold conservative uh, views but i disagree with those people on january 6th i don't think they're patriots i think they were cowards and um you know you know, that's, I, I think, having conservative values, I can hold that belief and still hold my own beliefs and still have dialogue, you know, and that's the problem is, mm -hmm. in my opinion, is there's not enough talk between two sides anymore. And respect for one another. Uh, Sean, yes. one more question before you go. If, if anybody is watching this, uh, this interview with you that is harboring that same anger that you had mm -hmm. or feels that the pull towards extremism, <clears throat> what do you want to say to them? I would say don't waste your time. I, you know, I, I had this <clears throat> grand idea of being a martyr for the cause and stuff and giving my life for the cause when I was a 20-year-old kid. And I was part of various organizations. I was a skinhead, and I was a member of Aryan Nations. And people will incite you. People will push you to do things. And then when you do them, they run and hide. They, were, they are not your friends. They will leave you to rot in a prison. Um, thankfully, <clears throat> I had a second chance um, because of changes in the Supreme Court. And, but not everybody's going to get that chance. So if you make mistakes that are going to ruin your life, you're going to have to live with those consequences. And I'd advise you to avoid that by making the right decisions in life. Sean Gillespie, thank you for joining us.